six seven is called polygons in the coordinate plane. So this is why we had to review some of our information about midpoint, distance, and dealing with different things in the coordinate plane. Our first objective is going to be classifying a polygon in the coordinate plane by determining side lengths and slopes. And then the second thing we're going to have is classifying polygons created with other polygons in the coordinate plane. So you'll see this is going to be our last example here where they give you a shape in the coordinate plane. However, they ask you to do certain things with it to create a different polygon. The first thing we have to do is we have to recall a few formulas. So definitely make sure you have these in your notes. These are going to be great things to know to get through these problems. They are on your reference sheet, but you should be able to use them and know how to use them, know which values to plug in where. So the first thing we're going to talk about here are triangles. There's different types of triangles and there's different ways to classify them. The first way you can classify a triangle is by their angles. And if we're classifying a triangle by their angles, we have either acute, obtuse, or right triangles. Acute being all of the angles are acute angles or small. Obtuse, well I have an obtuse angle in that triangle, and a right triangle is when we have a 90 degree angle for one of our vertices. The other way that we can classify triangles is by sides. We have scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. So equilateral, we've definitely already talked about. This means that all sides are congruent. We've also talked about isosceles, which is where two sides are congruent. And then a scalene triangle is where all sides have different lengths. So here's our first example. We're asked, given this triangle in the coordinate plane, is it scalene, isosceles, or equilateral? So the way we're going to determine this is we have to find what the lengths of our three sides are. And the length of a side is the same as the distance between those two points. So I have three points, A, B, and C. Let's first identify what the coordinates of those points are. A is going to be 0, 1. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4. And C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0. And then the other thing we need is we need the distance formula, which is square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So first thing, let's find the distance between points A and B. So distance between A and B is going to be 4 minus 0 squared, because that's our two x coordinates, plus 4 minus 1 squared. That's our two y coordinates. And that's going to equal square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 16 plus 9 which is square root of 25, which gives me 5. So I know the distance of A, B is 5. All right, so now let's switch to a different color and let's find the distance of B, C. Okay, so again, square root 7 minus 4 squared. It's my two x coordinates. My y coordinates, 0 minus 4 squared. This gives me 7 minus 4 is 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. So 9 plus 16, which again is square root of 25, which equals 5. So the distance from b to c is 5. And then the last side that I need to find is distance from A to C. 
I get 7 minus 0 squared plus 0 minus 1 squared, which is 7 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is 49 plus 1. So square root of 50, I can simplify that. 50 is the same as 25 times 2, and I know that the square root of 25 is 5, so my answer is going to be 5 square root 2, and that's the distance of AC. Okay, so I found my three lengths. Now, when I look at these, I have distance from A to B is 5, so let's write that in here. This side is 5. I also had that my next distance, BC, was 5, and my last distance, AC, was 5 square root 2. So I have two sides which are the same length, which means this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so here's a U try for you to do. I'll be checking this when you come to class. And then this is a slightly different problem because now instead of a triangle, we have a parallelogram. So the question asks, is this parallelogram a rhombus? And explain. So what I have to do is I have to think about the properties of a rhombus. We know that we have these two distinct qualities. One, all sides are congruent, and two, my diagonals are perpendicular. So we can easily check that all of our sides are congruent by doing the same type of thing we just did with our triangle. So again, I'm going to find the coordinates of my points. I have negative 2, 0, 0, 4, Four, five, and two, one. I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the lengths of all of those sides. So my first side, distance from A to B. And I'm going to cut out a little bit of the math here, those in-between steps. I've got zero minus negative two makes that positive. Zero plus two squared plus... 4 minus 0 squared. This gives me square root of 2 squared is 4 plus 4 squared is 16, which gives me a square root of 20, which I can simplify to be 2 square root 5. And the way I know it's 2 square root 5 is because 20 breaks down to 4 times 5. The square root of 4 is 2, so that gets to come out to the front. My 5 has to stay in underneath. I'm also going to do distance from A to D to get 2 minus a negative 2 becomes plus 1 minus 0 squared. This gives me 4 squared is 16 plus 1 squared is 1. Square root of 17, which can't be simplified. I also have distance from B to C. So 4 minus 0 squared plus 5 minus 4 squared gives me 16 plus 1 square root of 17. And oh, hmm, I can even stop here because a rhombus has to have all sides congruent. And just by looking at the two sides that we did first, I don't have two congruent sides. I got square root of 20 and square root of 17, which means right off the bat, this is not a rhombus. But let's just say, for example, it did go all the way through and all of my sides checked out. The other thing I would have to check is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So what I would have to do is determine the slope and see if my slopes are opposite reciprocals. So what I would do is I would say, okay, I know my diagonals are from A to C and B to D, and I can find the slope between those by doing rise over run. So for A to C, I go up 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five. I go up five, and I go over one, two, three, four, five, six. So my slope from A to C is up five over six. But my slope from B to D is down one, two, three, over two. So slope from B to D is down three over two. Are those two things opposite reciprocals? No way. So again, this isn't a rhombus. So now we just dealt with rhombus, but I also want to give you a couple of hints on how to tackle whether a parallelogram is a rectangle, or whether it's a square. If I'm checking whether a parallelogram is a rectangle, I need to check whether the diagonals are congruent. So I would go through and I would find the distance from one point on the diagonal to the other point on the diagonal and see if those distances end up being the same when I calculate them. For a square, I have to make sure that the properties of the rhombus and the rectangle hold true, which means I have to check whether diagonals are congruent, but also the two properties we just talked about for rhombus, all sides congruent and the diagonals are perpendicular. So here's a U try for you to do where you have to determine whether this is a rectangle. Again, I just told you the hint on how to figure that out on the last slide. So make sure that you are checking and showing your work. You cannot just say, yeah, it looks like a rectangle. Can't do that. You have to give me proof. And then this last example goes back to that second learning objective I mentioned to you. It says, a kite is shown at the right. What is the most precise classification of the quadrilateral formed by connecting the midpoints of the size of the kite? So they don't want you to use this kite. They told you it's a kite. They want you to find each of the midpoints, the exact midpoint of those lines. They want you to connect them, see what kind of shape you get, and then use that shape and do what you just had to do from the last couple examples. Determine, do they have all congruent sides? Does it have perpendicular diagonals? Are the diagonals congruent? You have to determine what shape it is. So I'll be checking that in class as well. Make sure you complete that problem. And this is the end of the video. So I will see you in class. Make sure that you have nice, neat notes and you've done all the U-tries.